Hi everybody, this is Anastasia from AnastasiaPopova.com and CrochetForBabies.com. Thank you for joining me. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make this awesome, easy to crochet hat. Hats are one of my favorite projects to crochet. This hat is easy and quick to make. It is worked from top down and spiral rounds, so there is no need for chaining or joining rounds with slip stitches. The hat starts with four rounds of increases and then is worked straight down. The main stitch used is double crochet stitch and the hat is edged with reverse single crochet. I am using bulky weight yarn so the hat is very quick to make. Using uh, bulky weight yarn, Baton's color wool, and a J hook 6 millimeter. I'm going to start with an adjustable ring. So hold the short end in front of you, two fingers and a thumb, wrap the long end around your two fingers, cross it to the side, and hold it with the other two fingers. Now with the hook, insert the hook under the first strand, over the second. Pull it forward, swing your hand, and yarn over with the long end that's coming from the ball of yarn, and pull it through the loop on your hook. So that is the chain that secures the adjustable ring open. Now that I have my first chain done, I'm going to make 11 double crochet into this adjustable ring. So I'm going to yarn over, insert the hook into the ring. The three loops on the hook I'm going to yarn over go through two, yarn over go through two. All 11 double crochet has to be worked over these two strands, so part of the ring and the short tail. See where it's twisted here? So that's where I'm working over those twists. How many do I have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. I'm going to double check to make sure that I have 11. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. And first chain. So now I'm going to pull the short tail to tighten up the ring. Now I'm going to make round 2. In round two, I'm going to do two double crochet in each stitch around. So yarn over the hook, insert the hook under two strands of the next stitch. Finish one double crochet and do another one. So I'm inserting the hook into the base of the previous stitch, so the same space here. Then I'm going to put two double crochet in the next stitch. One more into the same spot. So since I have two here, I'm going to put two in the next one. Then two in the next one. One, two, two in the next one, two in the next one, two in 
join the next one. And join the next one. Join the next one. I think I have one more to do. Okay, so I'm going to double check that I have 22 stitches, which I should have at the end of round two. One, two, three, four, five, six. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. So I finished round 2 and I'm going to mark my last stitch. I'm going to mark my last stitch. So where do I put the marker? So I like to mark the top of my last stitch. So I'm holding those loops together so it doesn't stretch out the last stitch and then insert the marker on the two strands the way I would insert crochet hook when I would work into that stitch. So I'm marking last stitch. So I'm about to start round three. In round three I'm going to double crochet in the next stitch, two double crochet in the next stitch. So one double crochet in this stitch and then two double crochet in the next one. One, two. One double, double crochet in the next stitch. Two double crochet in the next one. One double crochet in the next stitch. Two double crochet in the next one. One double crochet in the next stitch. Two double crochet in the next one. If you get distracted and you're not sure where you are, where you stopped, look for where you have two stitches versus where you have one. Let me show you what's how I look for them, how I try to find when I have one, where I have two. First of all, you can't look very, very close at your stitches, so because that disrupts your work and you can't really see them very clearly. It's better to look at your work from a little bit of a far. So you're looking for, when it's two stitches coming from one spot, they're a little bit squished at the bottom. So they're not standing alone, separately. So like you can see that this is just one stitch and these two stitches, they come from the same spot. And this one is also by itself. So this is where I have two. This is where I have one. And here I have two. So I'm going to do one in the next one, two in the next one. yarn feels very nice to work with. It doesn't split, flows smoothly. The colors change nicely without them being too overwhelming, but it still gives you nice variety. One more next, and two in the next one. So I see my stitch marker, which means I'm approaching the end of this row, round. So one in the 
next stitch and two in the marked stitch. If you've done all your increases correctly, you will always finish your round with the increase, with the two double crochet. If in your marked stitch you're putting only one double crochet, that means your increases didn't line up somewhere, and it's a good indicator that you should double check. So at the end of round three, I should have 33 stitches. I'm going to check. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three. So I have thirty-three stitches. I'm going to move my marker up now. So in round four, I'm going to double crochet in the next two stitches, two double crochet in the next stitch. So double crochet in the next two stitches, in the next one, in the next two, and then two double crochet in the next one. One, two. Double crochet in the next stitch. And the next one, and then two double crochet in the next one. One double crochet in the next two. One, two, and two in the next one. One double crochet in the next two. One, two, two double crochet in the next one. One double crochet in the next two stitches. One, two, two in the next one. Two together. And two in the same stitch. One, two, and two in the same one. Two in the same one. One. Two. And two in the last stitch. So since I ended with the two, it's a good indicator that I've done my increases correctly. At the end of this round, I should have 44 stitches. I'm going to check. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 
20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44. I'm going to move the marker up now. Since I'm making a toddler size, I think I am done increasing. I don't need to make my crown any bigger so I can start working on sides, which means I'm going to double crochet and each stitch around. And I'm just going to work in spiral until it's long enough from the crown down. So let me start. So I'm going to double crochet in each stitch around. I'm not doing two double crochet in each stitch anymore. I'm just doing one double crochet in each stitch until I get all the way around. And I will probably do it for five or six rounds, depending on how long it is. I'm also planning on putting edging at the bottom of the head. So I'm going to make it slightly shorter so I can fit that edging thing. So I'm going to double crochet an each stitch around until it measures about six and a half inches from the car from the crown downwards. And I will see you then to finish up the hat. So my hat now measures um, about almost seven inches, six and a half, seven inches. I have four rounds of crown and six rounds of double crochet an each stitch around. As you can see here, since we were working in spiral, now I have this big step, which I need to even out before I do the edging. So to even it out, I'm using crochet stitches that are slightly shorter than the stitch before. So after double crochet, I'm going to do a half double crochet in the next stitch to do a half double. I yarn over the hook, insert the hook into the next stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop. With three loops on the hook, I'm going to yarn over and go through all three threads at the same time. That's a half double crochet. In the next one, I'm going to do a single crochet. Insert the hook into the next stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, with three loops on the hook, yarn over, and go through both loops. And then I'm going to do a slip stitch. Insert the hook into the next stitch, yarn over, and pull through everything you have on your hook. So you could see that now my hat has a straight edge. Um, I like to finish a hat, this hat with a um, reverse single crochet. So reverse single crochet is similar to single crochet. Uh, the difference is instead of working in this direction, I will be working into the opposite direction. To start that round, I'm going to chain one. Then I'm going to start with this stitch. I'm going to insert the hook under two strands of the next stitch. The hook goes over the yarn and brings the yarn through the fabric. Do you see how I have two strands twisted on my hook? Now I'm going to yarn over and go through those two strands. Let me do this one more time. So I'm inserting the hook. Let me see if I can. All right, so I'm inserting the hook under two strands of the next stitch, hook over the yarn, Pull up a loop, twist, go through two. Two strands. Um, sometimes there is a tendency when you bring, uh, when you're pulling up this strand through the fabric to have the hook go both through the fabric and through the loop on your hook. Try to avoid that. You want to make sure you have two strands of your hook first before working through them. Otherwise, you have a reversed slip stitch and not a reversed single crochet. So 
So I'm going to do this all the way around. I'm just going to pick up the base here a little bit. I like this sort of edging, the reverse single crochet. I use it on a lot of other patterns and a lot of other edges, not just the hat. Um, I think I have a cardigan that's done with a similar edge. And then I have a zipper going right to the edge. It looks really nice. That's adds a little bit of an extra dimension to your crochet work. You could probably use this edging on your knitting pieces as well. Well, almost all the way. Sometimes if you're having a hard time with making reverse single crochet, using a hook the next size up would also help to make them, uh, to give them a little bit more volume and to make it easier to go through the loops on your hook. I think I just pull the loops a little looser when I do this stitch than my regular single crochet. So I'm almost at the end. Alright, so this is where I started with the chain. So I'm going to stop here. To fasten off, I'm not going to chain or do anything here. I'm just going to cut a few inches, maybe like six inches of the yarn. And then extend the loop that's on my hook until that you know, end comes out. Then I'm going to use a yarn needle. Okay, so I'm going to thread the yarn tail into the yarn needle. And to finish this off, um, so what I would like to happen when I'm all done those two wraps are laying close to each other. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to align the edges and then insert the needle like on the one strand of that very first stitch. And if I pull on it just tight enough, that brings the wraps close to where I want them to be. Then to secure it coming from back of the work at the bottom of that stitch, And then I'm going to weave in the ends on the inside of the hat. Um, I like to weave in the ends going up and down because the hat will stretch this way. And if you weave it in in this direction, there are more chances of the yarn end to come out. So when you weave in through, do you see how I inserted the needle? And it does not show on either side of the hat. So that's the preferred way of doing it. You don't want to create yarn floats, meaning you don't want yarn to stick out on one side or the other. So I did a couple of stitches up and then I'm just going to do the same down. I'm not hiding the whole yarn end. I'm just going through enough stitches to cover it, uh, to hide it. So from here I'm just going to trim the end and my hat is done. Um, I think I would like to put a pom pom on the top here. Now that you have your hat and the pom pom done, 
I'm going to show you how to attach it. I like to use a hook for that. Um, since I'm going to be attaching the pom pom to the top of the hat, I'm going to insert the hook from the inside of the hat to the outside. So I insert it out between two stitches. Then I'm going to bring one of the strands through inside of the hat with the hook. Now I'm going to insert the hook back through inside of the hat, out. So I'm doing it across to where the other strand came out. And I'm bringing it in the inside again. Then go through. Do this again. I'm inserting the hook between two strands across from the other strand and pulling the second strand on the inside of the hat. Okay. So on the inside of the hat I have three strands now. One from the adjustable ring from the beginning of the hat and two from the pom-pom. So first I'm going to double knot the two strands of the pom-pom together. Since I'm using 100% wool, I'm being very careful not to pull it too tight, not to rip the yarn. Now I'm going to double end the hat strand with the pom-pom strand. And hat strand with the other pom-pom strand. Now I'm going to bring all of those three strands to the outside of the hat, next to the base of the pom-pom. And I'm going to do it one by one, not all three at the same place. Now that all three ends are on the outside, I'm going to trim them to match with the pom pom. And that is it, my hat is done. Pom pom is attached. Thank you for watching. If you like the video, please click a thumb up. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below or contact me through uh, private messaging and subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching.